We're, we're going to talk about a couple of different things. First, I'm going to just start with some stuff about a quick little thing about HubSpot, who we are, who I am, and is on marketing, and then we'll get into some keys for a successful blog. Oh, I've got about 25 minutes and probably 35 minutes of things to talk about, so I'm going to talk fast. Uh, please feel free to raise your hand, interrupt, wave me down if I get on a roll and you're like, wait, wait, three steps back, I need to know more about that. Um, feel free to interrupt, I love it. I brought it on a conversation and just stand up here and have y'all not know what I'm talking about. Are you going to post this anywhere? Yes. It will be on Friday.net backslash hotspot. Um, I'll also, I don't know a lot of slides here, but I'll do the linky thing so it comes up under the word camp <laughs> event as well. Um, it'll go up later today. So HubSpot uh, was founded in July 2006 uh, from a couple of guys at MIT, we're, we're big dorks. We live across the street at the Cambridge Innovation Center and we sell marketing software. Uh, it helps people with their inbound marketing. We've got about 2,500 customers now and over 100 people. So we're a pretty big first startup. Um, my job there is I'm a product owner. So I actually work on the, the, the tool that we sell to our customers. I'm a geek. Um, what we basically believe is that marketing has changed. It's not about interrupting your customers anymore. It's not about beating them up with television ads or calling them during their dinner time. Instead, it's about creating really great content and being on Google and writing a blog and making videos and putting all of that content on the web so that when they're interested in what you do, they can find you. It's all about making content to get found. So instead of being that sledgehammer banging down their door, you're the magnet drawing them in. And blogging is a really, really key component to this. Blogging is one of the easiest ways to make a lot of content. And you blog and you write content, and it helps you get more links, it helps you get more traffic from your SEO benefits, from getting found via Google. And then you're compounding that with a little social media, you put it out there via Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and all those great things, and you get more traffic and more links, and it helps compound it even further. There's a key component to this. You have to be writing great content. If you write about you know, your dog Skippy, I mean, maybe you're a vet, that's perfect thing to write about, but if you're trying to sell software and you're writing about your dog Skippy or what you have for lunch, people probably aren't going to be that interested in your product. So we're going to talk a little bit about key components to a successful blog, what to write about, types of posts, how to keep it going, how to spread it. It is a lot of work, so we're going to cover all those different things. And now to a teeny tiny bit on measuring your blog. I'm not going to go too deep in there because there's a great session later today and I don't want to see anyone's thunder, but I cannot talk about blogging for your business without doing a little bit of measurement. It's just not within me. I can't handle it. So, everyone with me? We good? All right, good stuff. Please do not. First thing is identifying your target persona. Essentially, your persona is the person you're writing for. And as a business, as a marketer, as somebody who's writing for your business, you need to know who you're writing for so you can give them the kind of content that they're actually interested in. There's a picture of um, David Mirror stuff with this. It's Katie, their HubSpot customer. They love their persona so much that actually the two people in the middle of this picture are not people, they are cardboard cutouts. They have cardboard cutouts of their personas that they have around the office, and they take pictures with them. At HubSpot, we have Mary, Ollie, and Ian. Mary's practically my best friend. She actually existed. We go out for drinks together. I talk about her and think about her all day long. And what's important is in blogging, you want to create content for those personas. You want to create content that they're actually interested in reading. So Mary is a VP of marketing. She works at a company, and she's trying to figure out how to market her product better in this new marketing world. It helps a lot. We don't write a blog about building marketing software. That's what we do. It's not what we write about. We write about how to be better at marketing. We write about being a good marketer. We write content that a VP of marketing at a company actually wants to read. Something that she's going to be interested in because that's what she does all day long. The other important thing about it is figuring out what keywords attract your persona. Uh, you want to, and this is because when your customers, your potential customers, are searching on Google, you want them to be able to find you easily. And they do that, you do that through keywords. So you want to do a little bit of keyword research and fill your posts with those keywords. Uh, some of our keywords are internet marketing, that's our design and there's internet marketing blog, that's our blog. That's what we call it because marketers out there are always like, what is this internet marketing thing? I've got to figure that out. Um, we also use the terms inbound marketing and outbound marketing because people are starting to know what those terms are and use them. Um, this is just a tool in HubSpot that you can use to research keywords, but there are a lot of free options out there. One I can recommend is Google AdWords 
And what's great about it is it tells you how many monthly searches, how many times per month on average people are searching for that keyword. And so, say, a, my favorite example is my father-in-law. He's a dentist. And he's a dentist that fixes people's mouths after they car accidents or punch in the face in a bar, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Some people might call it a cosmetic dentist. He hates the term because it implies it's by choice. That it's not something you need, it's something you choose to do, like take a boob job or some other kind of cosmetic dentist that industry you might choose. So he doesn't like that, but the fact of the matter is, that's what people search for when they're looking to get their teeth fixed from a car accident. So he can't call it, you know, repairment dentistry. He can't call it all the words he makes up because no one searches for them. So you have to find the keywords that people actually use and target uh, that are targeting their persona. Does that make sense? Alright. One word of caution here. When you're writing for your persona, you're not writing about the or product, you're not writing about your services, you're writing something that they're interested in. This is like the example I used for HubSpot. Our blog, does anyone ever read the HubSpot blog? Anyone ever heard of HubSpot before? There it is. Woo! Our blog, <laughs> it, it, we never talk about our product. You'll never see an article there about our product. We have a separate news blog where we might post things about our content. There are like 20 people that read them and one of them is my mother. because She enjoys that kind of stuff. But for the most part, people reading our blog don't necessarily hear about our product regularly. They'll get that through other things. We use the blog to draw them in to attract them so that they've heard about HubSpot so that they know what we do. Hold cool, everyone with me? All right. The next really important step to creating a great business blog is having a mix of posts. If you take a look at the homepage of the New York Times, they do not all have one type of article. There's news articles. They've got some video up there now. Um, lots of photos. Uh, you can see that on Boston.com too with a big picture, one of my favorite blogs. Um, they do features, they've got tongue opinion, lots of different types of content. A little bit of content for everyone. You want to appeal to the broad spectrum of people that are going to come to your site. These are five posts that we've written in the last uh, couple of years. The first one is a kind of how-to type article about link building. The second one is the state of the toy sphere. It's a big, meaty report with lots of data for people. The third one is a music video, because we like to have fun. The fourth one is six tips. It's just, you know, boom, 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 six different tips. And the last one is a cartoon. And you can see that they've all gotten pretty decent page views. And so this is just an example of different types of content and that they do perform well for your audience. And you really want to create types of content that hit the broad spectrum. Well, I'm going to dive more into the different types right now. Um, the first one is your raising brand. These are the posts that you want to be able to turn out every single day. They do not have to be really long, but they do need to be useful. You want to make sure you get a good key point in each of those posts. Um, but they're the kind that you, you want to really just continue to produce and get really good at pushing them out. Not super sexy, just raising brand. Then you've got your spinach. Your spinach, so those are the kind of posts that help set you up as fault leaders. They help make you, you know, really an industry at the forefront. You're teaching something, you're showing something really hearty and healthy. Um, these, these require a little bit of time and effort. These might be where you're saying something a little bit different. It might be where you're trying out something new when you're teaching people something. So you've got to have some spinach with your raisin bran. Then you've got your roasts. Your roasts are your big blog projects. This is things like our State of the Twitter report. Uh, they released the next one, or well, the latest one earlier this week. We had a couple of interns that helped with that for a couple of weeks to pull the data, do the research, figure out what the key points about Twitter are, and pull that together. You don't do these every week. These, you know, every six months you might do a big roast. They take time. They're consuming. But the benefit to them is they'll get a lot of links and traffic. People, if you're, if you're putting out some really interesting data that they might not have on their own, they're interested in that and they're going to spread it and they're going to push that out to other people. Then to my favorites, the Tabasco posts. This is where you spice it up a little bit. You start a little bit of a fire. You might say something controversial. Uh, earlier this year, our CEO decided to write a post about how the PR industry is dead, and there was a lot of fire with that one. Uh, when you do these posts, you need to be ready to respond to the comments. It's great to put controversial things out there, but if you're going to put them out there and then just let everybody talk and not join that conversation, you lose a lot of the benefit of it. You also don't want to do too many of these posts. They're controversial, and if you do them all the time, you might start to degrade people's trust. And so, again, like the big roast, you do this once every couple of months. Uh, try to start a little bit of controversy. And actually, I lied. The next one's my favorite. The chocolate cake. These are the fun things. 
This is creating a music video. This is putting up a cartoon. This is doing a funny poll or writing something entertaining and witty, satirical. This is where you have a little bit of play, you do a little bit of fun. Um, you can get a lot of traffic in like cities. Uh, their infographics are a great way to do this. You know, those pictures that are trying to show something great, but it's a visual way to show it. Lots of graphs, cool stuff in the, in the shopping hate posts. Sound good? Different kinds of posts? We like that. The next thing is to write great posts. And yeah, okay, write great posts. But you do not need to be anyway. Anyway, wrote great books, whatever, that's awesome. You just need to really write good content and some tips. Your posts don't need to be, you know, gigantic. They do not need to be 10 pages. 500 to 800 words are good. Concise and clear is great. Having one idea per post. You, all, you must all read blogs, right? We're here at Word Camp, so we read blogs. We like blogs. Um, and when the post is too, too long, and most people don't read the whole thing. And so you want to really get your point across without being too verbose. You also, have headers in your post structure are really good. Because how many of us go to your reader and you're reading through the various blogs and you, you skip? You skim a little bit. We all know that. So you want to make it easy for your readers to find the part they're really interested in that they can then dive further into and read. And headlines are a really good way to do that. Um, lists are also okay. You want to do lists every so often. Lists of my top five favorite blog posts on topic X. Um, lots of different, they're, they're easy to pull together. Great way to get a bunch of information across without having to go too far into it. So here's some blog topic ideas, things to think about. We said lists of five ideas, trends, uh, thoughts, five things I thought last night about our industry, uh, top trends in this business. Lots of lists are good. A list of links. Uh, here are the five most uh, the bloggers that I think are best for our industry. You can do lists of links on the tops of things. These articles were the most impactful for me in 2009. Uh, end of the year is always a great time for doing end of year lists, right? You see them everywhere. Take a recent experience and share it. Uh, maybe you're in the canning industry and you write about, last night when I was at the grocery store, I realized how we changed the way we market our cans. Whatever it is, you can talk about your experience and how that affects you in some way related to your business. We all, as much as we may like to pretend that we think about our work and our business a lot, it's part of we spend a lot of hours every day working on it. And so take those experiences, take those things that make you think of work and turn them into blog posts. Questions you've recently received, this is a great one. Make it easy for your readers to send you questions and then turn those into blog posts. Or even your coworkers. Uh, you are an expert, in, an industry expert, and so if they are questions, maybe you've emailed about them, think about how you answer those questions and how you can make them into a blog post. It's a great way to turn your work into something that you can go a little bit further with. And then comments on other blog articles. Uh, this is, everybody loves this one. You read a blog article, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Either way, it's a great way to write a post and say, you know, Bob had a great article on his blog and you linked to him and you explain why it was great. Or, I totally disagree with Doug's article about XYZ and you link to him as well. Um, the good thing there is it might bring those readers and those individuals to your blog. Maybe they write back. Maybe they leave you a comment. It's a good way to engage in the community. And then you can also turn press releases into blogs. Something big happens in your business. Something that game changer maybe. You can write about why you made the decision, why you went that direction, um, how come you're, you're doing this. And then the other one is check the email inbox. This has to do also with the questions, but look at the stuff you're working on regularly and see if there's a trend. See if you're talking a lot. Maybe in my business I'm talking about social media all the time. Um, it's not all we do, but it's a big part of it. Hmm, this is interesting. Everyone's asking questions around LinkedIn, so I'm going to write a post about LinkedIn. That's a good one. Or, hmm, no one's asking questions about LinkedIn. Maybe LinkedIn's not that useful anymore. Maybe no one's using it. I'm going to look into that and write a post about that. So look at what you're doing every day. And always add a photo. Photos are worth a thousand words. They make a blog post so much more approachable. Um, personally, I'm on my blogs. I, one of the things I struggle with is I take lots, I, I have a food blog. I take photos of my food, and then I struggle to get them from my camera to my blog. They're, my camera's filled with photos of everything I've eaten for the last, you know, umpteen months, and I have a hard time getting it to the blog. But in the business blog, you've got a lot of options as well. You can always take your own photos, take photos of people at your office place, take photos of conferences you're at, lots of cool things. But Flickr and iStock Photo are great places as well. 
I start photo, you can buy photos with Flickr. You cannot take any photo on the internet and put it on your blog. Uh, they're not all there for you to use. People have rights to the photos. So you want to make sure the photos you put on your blog have Creative Commons licenses. What that basically means is the person who took the photo has said you can use it and giving you license to use it. If you go to Flickr and go to advanced search, you have the option to only search content within Creative Commons. And what that means is then you're searching pictures people have said you can use. So you don't run into that problem of getting someone's photo on your blog and having them get really mad at you, any of that kind of stuff. You know that these are photos that they're okay with you using and you can put on your blog. It's always good to give them credit when you do that too. And then where do you get the ideas from? Writing a blog is you need a lot of ideas. And it's basically everywhere. And keep a list and utilize your company for this. If you've got one person writing your blog, uh, the other people in your company might have really great ideas. So if you've got a wiki, post them there. If you have a shared drive, create a Word doc and start putting them in there. Ask everyone to contribute their ideas. Uh, keep a list of it. And when you learn something new, flush it out. You might be sitting here being like, wow, chocolate cake post, that's a great idea. I'm going to write a blog post about chocolate cake posts and the five best chocolate cake articles I've ever seen for people in the industry. Conferences are an awesome place to get ideas. So I would spend today, every time you learn something new that really is relevant to your business or your industry, write it down. Keep a list, and then when you get to work on Monday, you'll be able to say, hmm, these are all really good things for me to go think about writing posts about. And then ask your readers. This is, I mentioned this before. Uh, uh, Deuce is one of my favorite blogs. She does a really great job of once a week answering a reader question. Someone who, and it could be a question about anything, it could be totally unrelated to her blog. You probably want it if you're blogging for your business, you probably want them to be more related to your business. But it's a great way to find out what people are interested in and what they're looking for. The other thing about writing great posts that's important is writing great headlines. This is my blog reader the other day. You're going to have to write something pretty spectacular in your headline to get me to, to weed you out from between all of the other posts. And so you really want to just pull something that's going to grab attention. Think about writing the headline before the article. What's the most important point you're going to make? It's going to also help you streamline the writing of your article. It's easy to start writing the article and then get proposed and realize all the different points you can make. So figure out what that headline is first. What's the main goal? What's the point? What are you trying to get across? And imagine your reader's not going to see the article. If you want to convey one really important piece of interesting, get it into that headline information. Also, always you can surprise people. Writing a, a, a post, a headline that's a little bit controversial, that's a little bit surprising, it's a great way to draw people in. I don't have spelling errors. I am the worst speller in the world. I can't even spell with spell check. And so I send my headlines from my blog posts to someone else to spell check before I publish every post. Um, and it's just I am it to someone, I get their take because I have published many blog posts with spelling errors in them. And believe me, when you post it out to Twitter, you tell people, oh, go check out my blog post, and you get 47 responses, and they're like, you know there's a spelling error in that. You're like, yeah, sorry, thanks. <laughs> so, no spelling errors. And this is also a way you should use your keywords. Um, those keywords we talked about at the beginning, the words that your persona is searching for in the search engines. Put those in your headlines. Put them up there big, make them in that title, because that helps your search engine efforts even more by having them right there in the, in the, blog, in the blog title. So here are some examples of blog article titles. There's the funny. GoDaddy 16-step checkout. Brainless marketing at its finest. GoDaddy, they sell URLs. If you want a new URL, GoDaddy is the place you go by. Their checkout process is 16 steps. And at every step, they try to upsell you. Um, this is a little bit of an ironic type title. It's trying to be funny. Um, it did pretty well on Dig, mostly because people were drawn in by that title. So humor is always a good way to go. Enticing. 12 quick tips to search Google like an expert. Again, this one did pretty well on Dig, but this draws people in because the, oh, I want to search Google like an expert. It's a little bit intriguing. They want to know what the tips are. And then there's pure SEO plays, free advertising on Google. People who are searching for free advertising in Google are really good uh, type of potential customers for SEO. <coughs> and what that does is SEO. And so free advertising on Google, that was actually our sixth most, pop, most popular HubSpot blog article. And the reason we titled this is purely for search engine rankings. Because those people that search for free advertising on Google might really be interested in things we have to offer. So it's not the super sexiest title, but it serves a purpose. Everyone still awake? Yes. All right, good stuff. 
Um, the next key is to sustain it, and this is sometimes the hardest part. When you're writing a blog, you could write five posts and not come back for three months. Not that many people are going to read your blog. Uh, so you want to pick a schedule. Best practices are to put a post on your blog once a week. All right? Seems like a lot, but pick a schedule for it. I'm going to publish my blog post every Thursday, which means I need to have my topic by Tuesday, and I'm going to block two hours into my afternoon on Wednesdays to write. And that's my goal. And then you want to stick to it. The other thing about this is if you're at a company and there's more than one person at <coughs> the company, you should have more people writing for your blog. Uh, you should ask coworkers to help. You should ask your CEO to help. Does the day of the week matter? So that's an interesting one. We've done some studies on that, and uh, the timing matters a little bit more. Um, publishing like 10, 11, 12 is really good. You get more people flow. Um, I don't actually, I think the day of the week depends. I, I wouldn't personally publish on Friday. I find that that's not great, or Saturday or Sunday. For business, most people read these blogs during the work week, um, and I would play with it. I would publish on a Monday first, and then I would publish on a Tuesday, and then I would publish on a Wednesday, and then I would publish on a Thursday, maybe different weeks, obviously, and see which one gets you more traffic. Good question. But essentially, the goal of blogging is to build up a rich base of content. You want to be publishing regularly, because that's what's going to help you the most to get a lot of posts out there. And there are a lot of different ways to do posts. You can do email interviews. Uh, come up with a list of five questions. Send them to the 10 industry leaders. Send them to a presenter from a conference you saw that you think would have interesting answers. Send them to your CEO. Maybe your CEO would be willing to do a question of the week or a question of the month where you come up with an interesting question for the industry and she or he writes a response. Do video interviews. Conferences are a great place to do video interviews. If you have a little you know, digital camera, it probably does video. Uh, you can put the person in front of it, ask them some questions, get some responses, get a three minute video. Video does not have to be long um, with some interview and put that up as a post. You can do guest posts. So maybe your friend has a blog on the same topic and you trade a post. You write one for their blog, they write one for your blog. Great ways to get some things. And then best of lists, we talked about that. Also, how to posts how we do this in our business. Um, we are struggling with XYZ in our marketing department. Maybe you are too, this is how we're solving it. Uh, we just did one of these the other day explaining why we're not going to go to trade shows anymore as a, as a company. And it got a lot of response, but essentially we showed the math, we showed why it would work out for us, and then put that out there so that other people could do the math for themselves. And then you realize that blogging is kind of a lot of work. And the question comes up, well, should I hire people to blog? And this, there are pros and cons to it. On the plus side, then you don't have to do all the writing yourself, and you can hire a professional writer who's really good at it. But on the downside is no one knows your business as well as you do. No one knows your customers as well as you do. And if you don't write, I gotta check my time. If you don't write those blog posts, you're not being part of the community, you're not getting involved. And that's an important part of blogging. The next step is to spread it. This is where social media comes in. You've got to think of it like a job search. You don't send out your resumes and then sit at home. You try to get in front of people, you network. So you need to take comments seriously. When they comment on your blog, get there and respond. Uh, most blogging platforms, and I'm pretty sure WordPress included, uh, let's just comment or include a URL, and then their name is linked. Go check out their website. Maybe they bought an interesting blog. Maybe you leave a comment there. You also need to leave comments on other people's blogs. It's a really important part of becoming part of the blogosphere, the community of bloggers. You go to their blog, you read an article, you write a comment. They might come back to your blog and leave a, write a comment. It helps you maintain, uh, create relationships. I'm speeding up because I just realized I'm almost out of time, right? So if we have more questions on this at the end, that's okay. Um, those comments, the worst comment in the world, and the many of you who have had blogs maybe have seen this, is great post. Have you checked out my website at? <laughs> Worst comment in the world. Don't leave comments like that. Share an example. Disagree. Agree. Uh, add a useful link. Add a link that will increase the value of the post to other readers. So maybe it's a post about something and you have a white paper that explains that brilliantly. Then that's a good link. But just sending them to your website is not a good comment. Ask a question. Try to engage the person who wrote the post. And then use your real name. Being online, being in social media, being in blogging, it's all about being a real person. You don't leave a comment and say you're HubSpot. But it's not the way to do it. Say you are an individual and use your name. We'll figure out where you're from. 
Publish it on social media. When you write your post, push it out to Twitter. Push it out to your Facebook group. Get those links out there and get as many people to see it as possible, because that's how you spread it. Um, link to your blog everywhere. Put links in your header, in your navigation, not in your footer. If I can't find your blog, I can't read it. So get it up there, right at the top. All right, here we go, measure your blog. I'm going to do this in 20 seconds or less. There are a few key stats. You can get them in places. We can talk about it after, and you can learn more later today. Subscriptions, RSS, and email. Page views, how many people view each of your posts. This tells you which, which posts are most popular and what kind of posts you should write. Comments. Who's commenting on what? What kind of comments get more engagement? What kind of posts get more engagement? Inbound links, pulling them in. Who's actually linking to me? What kind of posts do people want to spread? And then lastly, you are a business. You are trying to make money. Let's not kid ourselves. You want to measure visitors, leads, and customers. You want to know that your blog is actually bringing you more customers if you're trying to do money. Any questions? All right, I think I have two minutes. <laughs> Best practices, you mentioned that you mentioned that good practices to blog using the general. Yeah. Um, when, when you have a business, is there some advantage to sometimes using the business name in addition? So I would use both. I would always indicate that you're from your business, but use your person, your real name uh, so that they know you're a person. Um, so if you're commenting, leave your name and then the URL to your business. Um, it's also fair game to say what business you're from, but don't just put your business name. Yeah. I'll say it out loud. Uh, okay. So uh, I wonder, this is easy to do for a single person, but how do you take this and expand it to your company when half your people, half of the company might listen to this and not want to block or not? Yeah. Not is there an editing process that you use when something sucks and doesn't follow? So how to expand it to your company? Um, there, this is a good question. I would definitely say you want to get more people to write. You want to get more people involved. <coughs> Part of that might be having one person who's in charge of the blog, um, who might be a good writer, who can work with people to improve their writing, improve their posts, help them get a little bit more concise if they want. You, it, it, it's hard to make it a free for all, and you, you risk on quality. So I would have one person in charge of the blog, but really, really try and encourage others to write. And encourage them if they don't want to write, encourage them to give ideas for posts. Encourage them to get involved in that side of it, and then that tends to go a long way. Yeah, this is along the same lines. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about you know, what HubSpot has seen with the human side of the system, particularly in cases where the people who know the content really well and are really um, the appropriate authors mm -hmm. are not technologically inclined or not computer savvy, and so are not likely to go on a blog and post. Um, what are the best practices in terms of setting up a, a human system to make sure that stuff does get online? So that's where some of the different kinds of posts come in. Um, the interviews, uh, where you can ask specific questions and get some detailed answers, and then have a ghostwriter work with, with it. Um, it is challenging if people don't want to blog and don't want to be engaged in the creating of content. You can't have a hard time. <laughs> my, my tip would be fun. They might have a different type of content they're more interested in. Maybe they'd like to podcast. That's a great way to create content and then put it on their blog and link to it. Or do videos. Or maybe they're more interested in creating interesting tools that you can use. Um, those are other ways to try and create content on your blog. But I would think about interviews. I would think about guest writers. I would think about uh, ghost writers. I would think about other forms of content that they could create. Is that good? Right. We got time for one more. Your blog. So make sure all of the blogs are at your same domain. Make sense? 
But yeah, that's, that would be my take on it. Good stuff. I'll be around if you have more questions. <laughs>